Hey, James. So nice to see you. Why do you think I would ask you to do this whole video when you are an accounting major, were an accounting major, who is not and likely wasn't always planning on working in accounting? Why are you here? Great question. I bet because there's lots of students like me that are either stuck or thinking that they're pigeonholing themselves or maybe unsure about the you know past aside from the big four or you know industry that they can go with an accounting degree is my guess yeah so can you just elaborate a bit more on like the whole stuck your words not mine um you know what would make somebody feel like hey they're maybe in fourth year accounting uh or they're three and a half years in their see graduation on the horizon why would somebody feel stuck uh in accounting great question again um i think maybe they're like me staring at a consolidation at the height of fourth year wondering do i have to do this for the rest of my life is this the only destiny that a CPA or an accounting degree lays out for me. Yeah, and I, I think there's also, like I had a student <laughs> a couple of months ago and we were doing, you know, debits and credits as we do in financial reporting. And he's like, so next term, are there gonna be as many debits and credits? And I just started laughing because as you know, with a full blown consolidation as like our fourth years know now, uh, yeah, it's you're basically just doing debits and credits to smush two things together and eliminate the overlap. So, uh, you know, I, I, I was probably the least, it, it wasn't a serious, it, there weren't like tears at the conversation at the start, there may have been towards the end, because I just started laughing. I was like, yeah, like there are, but the same thing is like, we're telling stories. So it's not necessarily like you're doomed to debits and credits for the rest of your life. Um, it's but you definitely could be if you if you choose if you're like I love this debit and credit thing cool like this is the degree for you but also you're right one of the reasons why I wanted to have you here is to give students uh, an opportunity to see hey if I feel stuck or hey if I don't know what I want to do but I know what I don't want to do um, is it too late is it too late for me like what are my options and so yeah absolutely so that leads us into the next point um what you doing what you doing now when did you graduate um how many years ago <laughs> and what have you been up to since and what are you doing now i graduated in june i think of 2020 um no no 2019 we're in 2020 2019 so i've been out of school for a year and a half i guess um i've been at serial startups so i was at a financial tech startup when i first got out of school for just under a year and now i'm at a new startup that's in the SaaS space and we do um, sim name and software uh, and i also moved to vancouver for the absolute fun of it because everything's remote and we can that now but it's been serial startups for me um generally in sales Hold on. So serial startups. So you got your first in sales. So you got your position with a BCom in accounting from Dow uh, in a sales position, not in accounting. Correct. Hmm. And have you found yourself using in that first job, the first uh, serial, the first of a few uh, positions. Um, did you find yourself using accounting or at all, or was it kind of like a nice to have, or like what, what, if, what is your experience been with that? The first one, it was definitely useful in like a good round of way in the fact that we were selling capital to like enterprise companies, startups, we were dealing with their cap stack, like, you know, juggling their equity, their debt. So it was a lot of kind of technical knowledge you picked up throughout the accounting degree, like was really useful to like drop into conversations and you could really understand and have like pretty, you know, comprehensive and intelligent conversations with CROs and, you know, with their, whoever has their finance teams and whoever, you know, runs their books. So that was super helpful just being able to have, I guess, that financial literacy that you wouldn't get 
in other majors that you take in business. Yeah, like I remember you telling me a story that you taught your coworkers what subordinated debt was, which I loved. Like I absolutely, to steal your words, like nerded out about that. I was like, oh, that is awesome. Whenever people, uh, you know, take what they've learned and then teach other people, that is huge and can do so like confidently. Like, hey, yeah, no, absolutely. Here this is, and this is how it will help you. Uh, yeah. And then your role now, and I don't know as much about this one, um, all, um, what I do know, though, is that you've kind of been taking what you know in your experience and you're building out processes and you're building out teams. Is that correct? Correct. I guess there's some degree of like we're talking with budget decision makers all the time and, you know, just being able to have like a comprehensive understanding of a budget and, you know, where this product would fall kind of as a line item is like really helpful and just having those like open and honest discussions. Absolutely. And to be able to confidently talk about ROI, uh, you know, what is your value proposition? Uh, you know, can you maybe make this an asset? Can you kind of, or would this, you know, strictly fall as an expense and just kind of speak their lingo, get their buy-in uh, and communicate effectively. So address your user and their needs. So super cool. Um, okay. So... If you were me and you were in the middle of um, the term and you had a group of third year students or you had a group of fourth year students, knowing what you know now, what would you want to, what would you have benefited from hearing from me or from somebody like you? In terms of like career advice or just oh. school advice? Let's start with school and then let's, let's shift into career. Okay. Oh God. How do you survive? How do you thrive in um in almost end of third year, almost end of fourth year? Um, have a really good group to support yourself with would have been like, I mean, it's useful through your whole university career, but I find in something as no pun intended taxing as like an accounting degree. Um, it's nice to have that support and to like really lean on you for I feel like it's like not always widely advertised that you should be like harassing teachers for sorry professors for office hours or people maybe don't leverage it but like leverage it like you were 80 percent of the reason why a lot of us like got through our degree because you're just so helpful and available and just good at making the content like digestible um career wise though I think you did a good job I remember you brought in one of your friends who does maybe M&A's or something mm -hmm. like that and he did like something completely different and went like a totally different route so you yourself when you worked at your junior oil and gas company like that's a totally different route than what a lot of people consider being kind of the traditional path so I think you like did a pretty good job of being like it's a good tool and it gives you like a voice for sure to have yeah I think you hit the nail there yeah it's a tool and a tool is useful depending on how you use the tool so you know like a hammer hammer is great but you don't always need a hammer um and sometimes you you like lean heavily excuse me on a hammer and other times you're like cool maybe I'll just you know turn this around and um you know pull out the nail with it or maybe I'm going to set this in my toolbox and pull out another one uh, maybe I'll lean on my peers on my group maybe I'll reach out to Sam or my other accounting professors or other professors in general um you know like it's not it, and you know you did bring me up and I try not to talk about this too much because this is about you they want to hear about you right like you were them two or three years ago and now you are somebody who you know moved back to Toronto um, hustled got yourself um, an awesome fintech job in sales um, you know leveraged that and are in another um, position and then took that position started building out a team and asked to move across the country um, and really kind of owned it and kept adding the value and kept you know um, progressing throughout your career and kind of making your own path using the tools that you had so you know to to like you mentioned yeah i brought in some people and i'll continue to do it because there isn't one path there's you know 
I had one path, somebody else had a path and it might speak to different people. Um, but I think like, was it hard for you seeing your peers, seeing, um, you know, maybe people that came before you or knowing people that came after you, knowing that they wanted, you know, either big four, they wanted firm or they wanted industry, they wanted the financial analyst. Like, how did that make you feel um, seeing them having their jobs and then not having a position post-graduation lined up for yourself? Yeah, I don't, it's not discouraging, but it's like, especially when there's external influences in your life that are telling you the CPA is the way to go as well. Like it can get a little noisy. And I think it always just came back to me being like, it's not prescriptive. Like I don't need to do that. I still don't, I still don't have my CPA and I probably will never get my CPA. And you know that, and I know that. But like the whole degree wasn't for naught because it's such a good foundation for, you know, everything that's led me to, to now. Like, I don't know if I would be where I was at if I didn't take, you know, the accounting major and I didn't meet all my great peers and like all my great professors and that worked hard. So I just oh, think you yeah. need to understand that it's not prescriptive and why do what everyone else is doing anyway. Like do what oh. you want to do. Don't just do if you want to go this like big four route, it's a great way to go. You're going to make a ton of money if you stick it out and become a partner. If you want to go industry, you can make a ton of money. If you want to never touch your CPA again, you can make a ton of money or whatever yeah. motivates you. That just motivates yeah, I me. I love that. Make the money, do whatever is going to get you, you know, going in the morning. But I, I think yeah. money, I know as much as possible. Yeah, I know. I like that because if you... If you go for something, but inside you're like, this isn't what I want to do. And like, how far in do you have to be in order to do something that you eventually want to do? Or how are you going to feel if you chase something for the wrong motivations, meaning it's something you don't really want. Um, but, and then you get it. And then you're like, huh, like, <laughs> well, I got it. Shouldn't I be happy? But if you don't set your own goals, then how are you supposed to be happy? So like kudos to you, because I know that that couldn't be easy. Um, you know, some people right now perhaps want that accounting job and they don't have it and maybe they don't want it, but then they don't know what they do want to do. So, you know, one thing I saw with you is you slowly figured out like what you didn't want to do. And then you left yourself open to see what you, you know, wanted to do and you saw opportunities and then you bet on yourself, right? You were like, Hey, what's the worst that can happen? Um, the CPA is always, you know, going to be there. Um, your prereqs are good for another like five years. So take this year, you know, give yourself some time to figure it out and then go into the next thing, go into the next thing. Um, it's, it's funny because I, like, you know, that I do a lot of work with CPA and that that was part of my path. But the last thing I want to do is no, is for students to think that that's because that's my path. It's not what I support or mandate or what I think every student should do. Because, you know, one of my, one of my friends um, out here, he, he was from Calgary and he said something when I first started Dal, he's like, you're going to be the prof, you're going to be the accounting prof that um, has the least amount or the most people that don't go into an accounting major or like don't go into an accounting job. And I was like, because she likes to say like very contradictory things and I'm like oh um like why like you know why am I going to dash all these dreams and he's like well you just know that accounting isn't for everybody but it's all and it's also not um the be all and end all like it's a cool one path or cool couple paths and it opens doors but you know it's not the only way and it's it's never wasted you know being fluent in the language of business is, is, you know, even if you're just sitting there and you're trying to manage your own business, that's huge. You know, understanding where did my money come from? How much money do I have? Um, what's the difference between income and cash flow? <laughs> what, you know, what's, what's this going to look like to a bank? How, um, you know, if there is gray area and the standard, what story should I tell to communicate the best way possible? And if asked about that, how can I communicate why I made this choice? So, you know, while I didn't see it as a compliment at the time, um, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've come to really love that because it, it shows that it's, it's what I try to do is that, you know, you do you and I'll support you um, in whatever, whatever people, you know, get excited for. Cause it's, um, 
it's, it's a lot of fun when you can get up in the morning and work hard and like, look at something that you've done and be like, Oh, like I did that. Or I helped contribute to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so in there, I want to go to my next question. How would you define success? So how would James Barrett um, right now, uh, <laughs> how would you define success? Great question. Um, for 2020, it was monetary, just because the world was falling apart and a lot of people didn't have jobs. So I figured if I was employed, good to go. But that is not how it's going to be in 2021. Um, I would define success as not even like a lot of people say, like, find that balance of something that you like enough and it like makes enough money and blah, 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 blah. But I think it's really just like, do what makes you happy at this point. So if you can find a job that you're energized about and that you're not, you know, in constant slumps about, or it's like draining your energy or you're just in it for the cash, like you can just find something you want to do and in a place that you want to be with like who you want to be around. I mean, success obviously transcends just a job, but I think if everything's just aligned, it feels so much better. I know that's a very Buddhist kind of answer, but I think I'm Buddhist less good. money hungry than I should be. Or than I was, I guess. Yeah, Time is and, very finite. Yeah. You need to fill it with stuff that you enjoy. What I think is interesting about what you said is, you know, in 2020, it was this, and now it is this. Um, I want to point that out because your definition is your definition and your definition can change. My definition has changed. And I think that that's good. Um, it's good to change and grow and to reflect and, um, and to be constant, not constantly, but like when something feels like, Hmm, you know, you have, you wake up more days than not, and you're less enthused about where you're at or you're, you know, maybe there's, you know, 23 hours of the day where you're like, yeah, this is awesome. There's like that one hour or there's a pit in your stomach, like go evaluate that, get curious, um, ask yourself, why am I, you know, not, you know, <laughs> illuminating rainbows, like what's going on and, and then try things out, you know, um, yeah. I like the phrase, Hey, have you considered, like, I don't know how you orchestrated moving from Toronto to Vancouver, but you did. And, um, like that is so incredibly brave because you didn't see people doing that for you. Um, and you know, you work in a sales environment. So I'm sure that a lot of people around you are watching out for sales moves. So, you know, you have to approach it, um, as you would with anything else, um, in a genuine way in order to say, Hey, how can I meet your needs and meet my needs? And how do it's not an either, or, Oh, I can, be in Toronto and make a lot of money, or I can go out to BC and I can be happy. It's like, no, no, no. why can't I do both? Um, and I see a lot of times students bringing up these false dichotomies and I, I hear it in myself too. And I feel like maybe that's what attracts a lot of people to accounting. It's like, oh, there's a lot of jobs in accounting. I will go into accounting because there's jobs. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that mindset. It's a definitely a solid skill set because, and because of that solid skill set, there are jobs. But it's like, if you have been here, you now earn the right to choose how you use that solid skill set. And part of that is, you know, being creative, saying, if I'm doing this either or, oh, I can go traveling this summer. Um, or if I don't, then I can never travel for the rest of my life. Like what? What? It's like no. Like why? Like that. That is absolutely one option. Um, if you choose that, but if why would you choose that for yourself? Hundred percent. Yeah. So kudos you just, to you. Hmm? I mean, just putting yourself in the position to even ask is is more than most people do. So like, just don't be afraid to step out of like a prescriptive route. Like Vancouver wouldn't have happened unless I put my hand out and. You know, none of these jobs would have happened unless I put my hand out and, and asked for them. So nothing's going to happen if you don't do something about it, I guess, is a really good looking at it. So, you know, <sighs> ask the questions and the worst answer you're going to get is a no. Yeah, uh, I really like that. What's the worst that can happen? 
Uh, my, one of my favorite phrases is, ha, like, would you consider, would you consider me going to, to Vancouver? Would you consider? Because most people don't want to do just a blank, like, no, I wouldn't consider. Um, and what I've learned lately is, what would have to happen to make this true? Like, what would have to happen to make this possible? You know, but also, you know, it's good to ask, but you've also done something key before asking, and that was, you know, adding value. You add value, you add value, and you earn the right to ask the question. Put your hand up and say, hey, like, I really enjoy working here. I have a really cool opportunity um, to, you know, relocate to Vancouver. You know, what would have to happen for me to continue working with you and, you know, go out there for six months and for us to reevaluate that? What do you think about, um, this isn't one of um, the things that we've talked about previously, but what, like, do you have any, gen you brought up Buddha a little bit, but do you have uh, any general thoughts about regrets? Do you think it's better to regret, you know, the decision that you made or the thing that you tried or the thing that you wanted to do, but never, never did? No, I think it's lazy. Go on. Well, don't like if you're going to whine about something, it fix it or get over it kind of deal. Like it's a very big time suck and it's very unproductive to just like be upset. You know where I'm headed next year, hopefully applying for master of architecture. I could be bummed out that I went into business and did accounting because it's like not maybe what I dreamed of doing, or I could just apply for school and go back for masters and be happy about the perfect storm of other skills that I've gotten that are going to help me in architecture and planning so i just think it's it's a lazy thing to to dwell on regrets or mistakes and you know if it didn't kill anyone it can't be that much of a regret or a mistake oh totally and do you think you would regret not applying for the master's programs and not trying like now proactive regret probably i'm just gonna do it like yeah, i wouldn't even put myself in the position to not, so that there won't have be that opportunity to be regretful about it yeah you do it, but you don't no, have to having... face that kind of ugly shame or whatever you feel from not falling through or something how do you deal with the resistance or do you do you face any resistance like internally or externally uh you know the some people might call it fear or just the unknown or discomfort how do you deal with that I've definitely never been a person who's like bothered by discomfort or change, but like stress and handling competing priorities is something that absolutely totals me um, all the time because I like putting myself in that position. I don't know why I'm a bit of a sadist, I guess, but like, I'm like, I'm going to work a full-time job in with a team in Toronto, work on a different hours while building a portfolio to apply for a master's program. So like, that's not doing myself any favors at all. So it's not that I'm like afraid of putting myself in the position. It's just, it is a lot and like, it can be very heavy and just like have a good support system and be able to deal with whatever stresses you put on yourself. But um, no, the unknown's never been a, a scary thing because it doesn't need to be. Don't think, just do. <laughs> Or don't don't overthink. <laughs> or okay. when in doubt, do. <laughs> hey James, for context, just because the students listening to this, they um, might think that you were a straight A plus student um, all of your four years <laughs> in university. Uh, so if you had to put yourself in a quartile, um, or I don't know, how would you describe like kind of where you sat in academically? Um, just broad range, whatever you feel comfortable with, just so that people um, can put this into context. Can you just hang tight for two seconds here? Da, 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 da. Pull it up right now. Got it sent to me the other day. Uh, 3.2. And that didn't happen until third year. It was well in the twos for first and second. And has that held you back? Has it propelled you forward? Or has that just been part of your story uh, or something else completely? I honestly don't think, and please correct me because you know probably better than that. I don't think anyone cares about your GPA as long as you didn't fail out of school. 
for like a more professional like job because I mean everyone drops out of college and starts a you know IPO is a tech company for 20 billion seems like everyone does it now but if you're like I don't think your academic performance dictates how you're going to be professionally at all your character does I mean if you are a crappy person with great marks maybe you'll get the job but pretty quickly they'll figure it out that you're not awesome to work with because it's so much more than your ability to take a test or understand a concept in a book yeah no and this is uh something that it's really difficult for me to kind of connect with students during because i know i know they they want that a plus or they want that a or they want that and sometimes um they'll ask me questions and they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not like an A student or something. And I was like, well, first of all, <laughs> if anything, <laughs> my job is like exactly for the, not, you know, yeah. right? Where I can make the most impact where like I should be helping. Um, but the other thing is just like, so what? Like you said, um, and, I, and I will agree with you that in very limited situations, do people, um, kind of go through your transcript. I also find that the later that you are from university, the very few, like, and I'm talking, this is my colleagues, myself. Um, I, the last, I had to send um, a transcript when I was applying to my master's program, but it was essentially, I think it was just like a completion. Like what year did you complete? Um, and that was, you know, part of an application process that was part of, you know, hey, did you check this box? And what else are you going to offer? And how are you going to collaborate? And how are you going to communicate? And, you know, just making sure that you graduated in good standing. Um, but then it was came down to the letters of recommendation from like my professors, from people that I've worked with, those relationships. Um, you know, it's not to say that academics don't matter. It's just that they are, they're part of the story. They're not the defining part of your story unless you make them be the defining part. Um, you are so much more than your academic record. Um, and I think it works both ways too, because sometimes I see really, really strong students and they do this at the expense of everything else. So they do that at the expense of friends, they do that at the expense of, you know, having a part-time job or, you know, making connections or, you know, they just put so much focus on this. And then they, when they leave school, they kind of are like, well, well, what now? Like, I have this really great, you know, transcript. And it's like, well, that's cool. But what are you going to do with it? How are you going to leverage, you know, your transcript, but also more so like the lessons that you've learned and the people that you met and, you know, the passions that you cultivated, like, you know, so it can be a bit of a bummer when people think that that's gonna, on its own without, without initiative is going to just propel you forward. I would argue that like, uh the end of university and like maybe your first job is like one of your most important networking opportunities like you should not should not i mean if you have the capability to have a wicked good transcript and also be involved in your school and like really get to know your professors because imagine i didn't spend any time with like you or laura or anyone that i'm coming back two years later asking for an academic reference for a master program if I had not spent time with you guys, you'd be like, I don't know who this kid is. Why would I write them a letter? Like they don't, you know, they haven't spent any time building a relationship with me or, you know, the Rose School of Business or anything like that. So I think it's like very tactile balance of like formal and school because it's a good exercise. It's like having ownership and finishing things. Like get to know your professors, go on committees, like join the Commerce Society, make a ton of friends have fun it's still school and you're still in your 20s i'm still in my 20s like i expect to have fun for at least the next 10 years before i even consider growing up a little bit but no 100 percent. like your marks may get you in the door but it's going to be like you as a person and how you are to work with and, and you know how you show up for your team members that's gonna really propel you in any career even if you are a cpa working at you know pw a partner isn't just a guy who got a 4.2 GPA. There's a lot more underneath that. Absolutely. A lot, lot more underneath everybody. Um, all right. We're coming down to the end of it. Okay. Thank you so, so much. But first, before we sign off, 
Anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to add? Anything you want to ask me or tell them? Or, you know, what would you have wanted to hear two, two or three years ago? Just that it's not prescriptive. I think that's the biggest thing. Just remember that. And, you know, nothing is stagnant. I mean, Again, I'm sounding very buddha -y. I think it's because of 2020. It was just a very big realization and how fragile life is. And like, you are not your job or your academic record or, you know, any of those kind of, I don't want to say vain, but like make your accomplishments, you know, what you want them to be. You're not going to be judged at the end of your life on, you know, where you worked or where you went to school or what your grades were, it's going to be a lot more than that, but have fun. I mean, it's been a really shitty year, pardon my language, but to be in university, but it's a great time and you're going to learn a lot and network a lot and have a fun job with your accounting degree. I love it. Thanks, James.